in data communications and networking we are talking about uh, network security first we'll start with the security services that is network security if we have say bob and alice and they want to communicate or they are sending some data or receiving some data then this data is passing through various channels you know where various wires or maybe they are far apart in two different countries so this data is or the content is passing through various medium this is or we have various networks in between network security comprise of various services which ensure which tells us that how to see or verify or do certain arrangement that this content is not available to anyone or even if it is available they may not be able to hamper or do something which creates the security at geopardy situation so four of these services are related to the message exchanging from using network and the fifth service which is uh, related to the entity authentication and identification maybe on the network or in single system also so we'll see the message confidentiality integrity authentication non repudiation and entity authentication so sir these security services which are related to message or entity first is that as we said that we need to find out these are various security services so in these said security services one service may be to find out the ent identity or entity of the person how to auth authenticate so this entity we have authentication in this categorization while we have these services or these possibilities these are the security services which are related to message message passing from one point to another these are confidentiality integrity authentication and uh, non repudiation this is um, method you know method or message authentication while this one is your entity authentication so there is a difference between these two authentications we'll see it now first we'll start with the message confidentiality what is confidentiality the concept of how to achieve message confidentiality or this confidentiality can also be talked in terms of your privacy privacy or confidentiality has not changed for in thousands of years we have caesar cipher that used to happen in the era of caesar julius caesar so the message must be encrypted at the sender side say ls and decrypted at receiver side say bob this can be done using symmetric key cryptography or asymmetric key cryptography and we have seen various algorithms in symmetric and asymmetric key cryptography like we have seen aes ds rsa and various other in symmetric and asymmetric so we'll see the confidentiality of privacy with uh, symmetric and asymmetric key cryptography so the message confidentiality using symmetric key in two directions will be like this say ls when the data flow is in this direction so the encryption is done and we know the in this uh, first case the keys are shared between bob and ls encryption is done with the this key then the cipher text is obtained from the plain text and the decry decryption is also done with the similar key and the plain text is obtained from the cipher text this is a shared secret key that can be used in the ls and bob communication while we can have different different shared secret key which is recommended in bob ls communication how it is going to be we have this uh, shared keys but we want or we would require a different shared key which is always recommended in this communication right because if this key is shared and if someone grabs it in certain manner then he or she may be able to decrypt the data or encrypt also how we can achieve or what is the criteria of message confidentiality using asymmetric keys so in this case bob's bob's key are used in the bob or ls communication so this is the key which is which is public key which which transform the plain text into into the cipher text but the decryption decryption is by the private key that hold or that is held by bob only 
so ls key a these are ls key is used in babelis communication because this is how we can get again this is a this pink one and black one pink one is for encryption and when the data is coming back or in the other direction then the ls key will be used for the babelis communication for decryption in the opposite direction then we come to the message integrity this means the encryption and decryption it provides the secrecy or the confidentiality but it never or it will not be providing the integrity integrity so it is always uh, the case that we may not even need secrecy but we would also like to have integrity also so for that we will see the document and fingerprint message and message digest creating and checking the digest hash function criteria and hash algorithm sha1 so to preserve the integrity of a document both the document and the fingerprint are needed this is your message say a document then we apply hash function on it and this hash function will create the message digest which is the fingerprint hash function you can just uh, understand or uh, assume it to be a certain mathematical function for for providing various keys or we mapping it to various spaces so it gives you a unique code or hash hash value so the message digest needs to be kept secret so how to check the integrity ls now sends the document and the hash function is applied on the on it so that we can get the digest so the message and digest is sent together now this digest is check whether it is similar to the to the digest and when we what what we are going to do here is we apply the hash function on the document that has been sent so this document the hash document the hash function the digest which is achieved from this hash function it is compared with this digest so this two that these both digest should be similar if they are similar we accept it or accept the message otherwise we discard it this is how we check the integrity so what is the criteria of hash function hash function uh, criteria should be it should be one way ness it should have weak collision resistance it should have strong collision resistance what is uh, what we mean by collision is you know it always it is not very frequent you know once in a lifetime that two keys they point to this similar similar uh, similar hash uh, generated code so that will be a collision just assume that uh, you have say six six pigeons and you have only say three cages so two will come here you have to force them to go inside so that is a collision but we don't want that md5 which was a, which was prior to sha1 and this was very good until it created this hash collision and now there this is almost have uh, been outdated and now we use sha1 so can we use conventional lossless compression method as a hashing function is it possible can you answer this no we cannot a lossless compression method creates a compressed message that is reversible so you can uncompress the compressed image to get the original one can we use a checksum method as a hashing function we can a checksum function is not reversible it meets the first criteria however it does not meet the other criteria which is required for the hashing function so sha1 hash algorithms create a n bit message digest out of a message of 512 bit blocks so sha1 has a message digest of 160 bits that is five words of 32 bits each this is the message digest creation so we have initial value n bits now this is the message multiple of 512 bit blocks 512 512 like this so now this is passed through certain processing n bits is uh, the result then it is again passed to the processor likewise finally we have n bit of message digest and the processing of one block in sha1 which you just saw that means i am talking about this processor one processor so what is happening here is the result of the previous block or the initial digest these are a b c d e and these are processing each block 
means you have step 0 you apply w0 k0 some keys then again the result this goes for 17 and we see this go, goes for 78 times 0 to uh, sorry it goes from to 80 times 0 to 79 so final adding will be done we XOR this this initial value with the these opt-in values so this is the final adding so these are the value for the next block of the or the final adding. so each and every time some w0 and k0 is applied your s keys are applied now we come to um, message authentication that is mac message authentication code so a hash function cannot provide authentication so the digest created by a hash function can detect any modification in the message but not the authentication so a mag that is the code for message message authentication which is created by alice and how it is checked by bob so alice applying the key and the digest and then the processing by mag function it gives you the code so this code goes with your digest or your document and this message and mag goes this is the message and this is the mag so this mag and message so message is again passed through the mag function so mag is mag is what is received this is checked with the mac which has come so if these two are similar then we accept otherwise we discard at the bob's end this is the uh, h mac that is again the code we have a message along with the the key so hash is done so we get the h mac and again the hash is done so we get the so this h mac is nothing but the hash mac that is the code for with hash so this is sent uh, along with the digest or message just to ensure that just to make uh, this uh, authentication detected that the data has not been replaced or chained so this is h mac for us then we come to the digital signature so when alice sends a message to bob bob needs to check the authenticity of this sender so he needs to be sure that the message actually came from alice and not from some eve so bob can ask alice to sign a message electronically he can uh, she can sign so in other words an electronic signature can prove the authenticity of alice as the sender of the message so we prefer this type of signature as a or we refer this signature as a digital signature we will see the comparison we need for keys and process a digital signature needs a public key system so it is a public key based system how to sign the message itself you know signing the message itself in uh, digital signature now we have alice and bob so the data is flowing in this direction with certain key which is private to alice encryption is done so signing is done here the signed document is sent this is decrypted with the which is decrypted with the public key and bob can verify that this this actually data has come from because only when this the data which is which is uh, being signed by alice can be opened by bob then only or by the alice key only if bob can open then only he, he can verify that the data has actually come from alice so in a crypto system we use the private and public keys of the receiver in digital signal signature we use the private and public key of the sender again in crypto system we use the say alice and bob so in crypto system we'll use the private and public key of the of bob and in the digital signature we'll use the private and public key of the sender that is ls so signing the digest in a digital signature how to sign and how to verify again we have this uh, message so it is passed through some hash function and then the digest which is which is signed through the private key of ls is sent along with the with the message so the message and signature when it comes it is opened here with the public key of ls so when this is opened by the public key of ls this message is passed through the hash function and the digest is compared with the digest which has come and if it is okay then we accept otherwise we discard so this is the signing the digest in a digital signature so a digital signature today provides the message integrity message integrity and digital signature provides message message authentication also using a trusted center for non repudiation what is non repudiation that means alice has sent something to bob and now bob has received something now alice is saying that i am not i have not sent it this is non repudiation so how to check whether it has come from me or, or not so alice is there this is alice pr private key the message is signed here and then alice and bob m and sa what are these we will see just now 
M is nothing but the message. SA is signature from Alice. And uh, once this is passed through the trusted center, Alice public key is used to verify. And then this M, that is the message, the signature is with some trusted party private key, some third party. And once, once it is, it is being signed by the trusted party, now Alice and Bob, again the message is there, but the signature is from the trusted center. This was from signature from Alice. This is from the trusted center. So the trusted party's public key will be used to verify and now Bob can receive. This is using a trusted center for non-repudiation. So non-repudiation can provide or can be provided using a trusted party, which we have just seen. What about entity authentication? So entity authentication is a technique designed to let one party prove the identity of another party. So an entity can be a person. Let me tell you, tell you again. What is entity authentication? It is a technique designed to let one party to prove the identity of another party. So an entity can be a person, a process, a client or a sub. So the entity whose identity needs to be proved is called the claimant. And the party that tries to prove the identity of the claimant is known as the verifier. So see the passwords in challenge response. So in challenge response authentication, the claimant proves that she knows a secret without reveal, revealing it. A challenge is a time varying value sent by the verifier. And the response is the result of the function applied on the challenge. This is the challenge response authentication using a nuance. So Alice sends Bob, the server said, you know, this is a response from Bob RB. And now the third scene is that the response from Bob is checked with KAB. That is, we have a challenge response authentication using a nuance here. And this is the challenge response authentication using a timestamp. So there is a time involved. So Alice with certain time t will check the or will authenticate the response. This is the challenge response authentication using a keyed hash function. So you have a, a key also and a timestamp also with the with the hash. So this together is known as the hash for Alice. This is authentication with asymmetry key. Alice sends, then Bob responds, Bob responds with RB response. Then K is applied this with key and then RB, that is the response RB can be authenticated. This is authentication using digital signal. So you have Alice sending RB response and now you have a digital signature that is SA which is applied on RB which is Bob. Now we come to the key management. So we never discussed how secret keys in symmetric key cryptography and how public key in asymmetric key cryptography they are distributed and maintained public, private, etc. Where are where, where they are kept? Okay, where they are kept. So in this uh, section, we will talk about these. So we first discuss the distribution of these symmetric keys and we then discuss the distribution of asymmetric keys. So symmetric key distribution and public key distribution. So this is KDC. What is KDC? That is key distribution center for Alice, Ann, Ted, Bob, Key, George, Betsy. So a session symmetry key between two parties is used only once. This is session. So creating a session key between Alice and Bob with this key distribution center is like this. First Alice, that is Alice and Bob are going to communicate. So KDC will, will give the session key. A session key will be given with KAB. That is KAB for Alice and Bob and this is sent. And finally this KB will be used by Alice, Bob. Communication. So we also have certain Kerberos servers and what it does is suppose we have Alice. Now Alice requests a ticket from the say TGS or AS. These are the uh, so what servers. is actually happening here is there are multiple level of uh, say uh, session providing and encryption happening here. So the overview of Kerberos is like this. Alice. Alice would ask for uh, uh, the, this is authenticating uh, server. So AS is authentication server. So it will, it will request that, okay, I want this access to the Bob server. So AS will send uh, with certain encryption and this, this they use EDS, etc. So it will send a ticket, TGT. So ticket granting ticket it will send, a uh, ticket granting server it will send. So this ticket granting ticket will be sent to the, sent by the LS, this LS TGS session key and the ticket from for TGS, this is sent by AS to Alice. So now Alice is having TGS session key, this session key, and also the ticket for TGS, which is provided by AS, authenticating server. 
So in the next uh, step, Alice will request ticket for Bob through TGT. TGT that is ticket granting server. Now ticket granting server what it is going to give? It will return Alice Bob session key and a ticket for Bob to Alice. Now Alice has control of the session also and the ticket for Bob. Now it requests an access to the Bob server and then Bob after authenticating the, uh, the ticket and the session key it will grant the access. So this is the Kerberos server in totality. So Kerberos example is like this. Let us see. First Alice will go to AS. AS will give the this ticket granting ticket. So it will get some ticket TG Alice for this TGS for TGS. Now Alice will send the TGS the T and what whatever has been received for session for communicating with TGT. So this is ticket granting uh, ticket and this is the T for Bob. So it will be sent to TGS when once TGS gets it, it will send the Bob KAB communication and Alice KAB. So this will be received by Alice. Now Alice can send the Alice KAB and T to the Bob server and now Bob knows that this has come from TGS and it will give the time or session to Alice for the for the authentication and for uh, communication. So in public key cryptography, everyone has access to everyone's public key. Public keys are available to the public. So how to announce a public key just like this announce to everyone and you have a trusted that is KDC trusted center. So for trusted center, we have various directories for Bob Alice and then they are sent. We also have a controlled trusted center like this. So whenever Alice needs Bob key, it will send it to the trusted center. Then trusted center will in return gives which needs Bob key and the time to Alice. And certification authority what is going to give because Bob and uh, what Bob will do, it will apply because KB is already recorded. With Bob it is checked. So it is checked by the trusted center and then only the issue of the certificate will be done so that the announcement to the public can be made. This is uh, PKI hierarchy. What is this PKI? So this is uh, nothing but the key in the uh, key infrastructure, public key infrastructure hierarchy. So in this uh, we have various levels of uh, this is just as you know this, you have certificates. So which to to whom give the certificate because various author authorization has to be given. He will ask for uh, the level two, level two will ask for level one, level one will ask for root CA. So depending upon the company size, you have to decide what can be your PKI hierarchy. That is your public key infrastructure hierarchy. So this is all about network security. Thank you so much. Take care.